Hello folks! In today's video, I am going to show you how to make a custom confirmation page for your Google Form with a custom UI. I posted the last video about creating a custom UI for your Google Form, and the number one response I received were questions regarding how to make this custom confirmation page. On your computer screen, on the left-hand side, you'll see the Google canned response. This is what you get when you use a Google Form. The colors of the page change when you change the theme of the form. You can change the text in the top where it currently says demo form and where it says your response has been recorded, but that's it. Those are your, your limitations. On the right hand side of your screen, you see the confirmation page that is presented when you submit the form on my website. It's still the Google form, it's just a new confirmation page. You can do the same, and I am going to show you how. To do so, I'll switch over to my text editor. Okay, as I mentioned in the last video, I use Sublime Text. I've opened a new file in Sublime Text, and I am going to set it to HTML. Start by the open bracket, the left bracket, type HTML, hit tab, it automatically creates the bare bones HTML information for the document. And now I'll enter a title for the document. Okay, inside the body of the HTML, I'm going to start with an H1 tag. And inside the H1 tags, I am going to put the words submission confirmed. Obviously you can put whatever you want. On the next line, I'm going to use a set of H3 tags. And in the H3 tags, I am going to put thank you for your submission. If you're unfamiliar with the HTML uh, H tags, they're heading tags. It's just that simple. It's, it's heading level one and heading level three. Let's do a little bit of styling on here. So I want these to be centered on the screen. So inside of the open H1 tag, I will type align equals center. I'll go on down to the HT, uh, H3 tag and do the same thing. Okay, so those should be centered in my screen now. And because I have gotten a couple questions about CSS, I don't want to go into a whole tutorial on CSS because there are a lot of really good resources out there on the internet, and I am not one of them. Uh, but between the head and the body of the HTML, if you want to do inline CSS, this is where you would do that. And you can just start by opening the uh, style tag. Uh, it defaults in this application to text slash CSS, which is exactly what we want anyway. And since this is a really simple document, we're just going to apply some CSS styling to the H1 and H3 tags at the top uh, by applying it to all H1 and H3 tags. So how we would do that here is inside of the this, um, style tags, we would type H1, little curly bracket, and then on the next line down, I'm going to put, let's do font uh, family and we'll do sans serif. And let's do font weight bold. And in the H3 tag, let's do font family uh, serif, just so you can see the difference. And we will do font weight, actually, let's do font style italic. And I'm just doing this to add a little bit of styling to the page and so you get a little taste for CSS if you're one of the uh, newcomers to this. 
All right, let's look at what this looks like in a browser. Okay, you can see on the right side of your screen, this new confirmation page. At the top, we've got a large heading, the H1, that uh, is bolded and is in a sans serif font. You can see below that we have italics for that uh, H3 heading uh, and uh, that it has a serif font. You know, again, just the beginning, there's a whole world of knowledge out there for CSS, and this is barely scraping the surface. But we have our simple uh, submission page. Uh, so the next step is to edit our demo form that we created in the first video so that this confirmation page loads when you submit the form. Let's do that now. Okay, so we are in my text editor and we are looking at the demo form HTML page that we wrote in the first video. All we need to do is add a few lines of code to this file and then when we hit that submit button, we're gonna load that submission.html file that we just wrote. So inside of the body of the HTML page before the form, we're gonna go ahead and put script tags in and it will default to script type text slash JavaScript and that is exactly what you want. Now, don't worry if you don't know JavaScript, we're only gonna do this one line and then we're gonna move on. All that we need to do is to declare a single variable and set its value. So I am going to type var for variable, space, submitted, and then I'm going to set the value of the variable submitted to false. Okay, that's it for JavaScript. We have set a variable named submitted to the value of false, and we can move on. The next thing we need to do is to put an iframe in our demo form. Iframes have been around for a long time in HTML. They're traditionally used to load an external uh, website or HTML file inside of another one. You can see my text editor wants me to declare a source of where that other file is gonna be. This is a rare instance where we are not going to use that. The first thing I'm going to do is to name my iframe. I will call it hidden confirm. You can name it whatever you want. And then I'm going to assign an ID to the iframe. I'm going to use hidden confirm again. It doesn't have to be the same. I find it easier and there's no reason it can't be. All right, so now we've got the name and the ID. And now we hide it by doing style equals display none. Now that it's hidden, here's where we specify how to load that other uh, HTML file, our submission file, once the form is submitted. You don't need to understand what's happening here. You just need to put it in your form. That's the beauty of it. I am going to type on load equals, let's get some quotes, if, and then the word submitted inside of parentheses, which is our JavaScript variable that we set up on the line before. Then let's put some curly brackets in here. And inside of the curly brackets, window dot location equals uh, single quotes and inside the single quotes we need the name of the uh, form submission confirmation page that we just wrote uh, the page that says thank you uh, mine was called submission.html and since they're in the same folder uh, all I need here is the name of the file I don't need a file path then after those single quotes I'm going to add a semicolon and let's see, we've closed the curly brackets, we've closed the double quotes. This is all we need to do for the iframe. Now we can move on to the form action. 
in the form action. I noticed I never set a method last time. Clearly it wasn't required, but as a matter of best practice, I'm going to put method equals post uh, in my form action. And then we need to add two things. The first thing I am going to do is specify a target. Target equals, and then inside of double quotes, the name that you named your iframe. I named mine, hidden confirm. And then we need to change the value of the variable. So I am going to type on submit equals inside of quotes, submitted equals true. So what this will do, when you click the submit button, it will change the value of the submitted variable from false to true. And if we did everything right, we will load our submission page inside of that iframe, which will take over the window. Let's see how we did. Okay, so I have my demo form HTML file on the left. I've got it loaded in a web browser on the right. And if I did everything right, we will get our custom form submission confirmation page when I submit the form. So back to our questions from last time. Uh, what is your favorite color? Autocomplete knows it's blue. What is your favorite animal? Autocomplete knows it's dog. And what is your favorite food? Autocomplete knows it's pizza. Fingers crossed while I hit submit. And we have our custom confirmation page just as we hoped. Whew. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you too can use it to create your own submission confirmation page and stop relying on the uh, canned Google confirmation page. Because just like with the form UI, you add your own styling, whether it's uh, you know inline CSS or some external CSS, uh, or just whatever styling you want to use on this file. Uh, again, just like with the, the form UI, you can really make it match the environment where you're hosting the form and obscure the fact that you're using a Google form, even though you get all the benefits of using a Google form on the back end. So again, I hope you enjoyed this video today. I hope it was uh, useful to you and I look forward to making more videos in the future. Thank you.